So as we continue our look at the different characteristics of adaptive immunity, we'll entitle the next flowchart Adaptive Immunity Characteristics, AIC for short, to we covered the first three major characteristics of adaptive immunity, and those were the idea of B-cell and T-cell diversity, the idea of self-tolerance, you don't attack your own cells, and the fact that you have proliferation. You are going to have clonal selection that makes cells that do the actual dirty work of adaptive immunity. So of those four major characteristics, we've covered three. So let's just remind ourselves that there are four major characteristics. We already did three of them in the previous flowchart, and now we're going to look at the fourth and final one. The fourth and final one is similar to the idea that we finished off with in the previous video, the idea of memory cells. And we actually consider memory, immunological memory, its own characteristic altogether. And that's a big thing that is seen within adaptive immunity. So what I want you to remember about these characteristics is that these four major characteristics are not seen in innate, uh, innate immunity. These are specific and characteristic of only adaptive immunity, all four of these things. Immunological memory is one of the most important ones. It's shown in figure 43.15. Figure 43.15 shows you the specificity that immunological memory possesses. So let's take a look at what this is all about. When we talk about immunological memory, this is referring to the responses, or the response, I should say, for long-term protection. This is a big idea of our immune system. Long-term protection, response for long-term protection due to, and you can only have long-term protection if you have prior infection, okay, so it's sort of uh, a give some and take some here. Response for long-term protection due to some prior infection. How do we do this? Well, what we see within adaptive immunity is that the body itself and the immune system as a whole, IS itself, remembers. It has memory, okay? It remembers that the body was previously infected, okay? Both things are going to remember that you were infected previously. That's what immunological memory is about. But how does that help us in terms of long-term protection? So let's take a look. Let's finish writing this, that you were infected previously. There's got to be some sort of positive to remembering something that happened however many years ago or maybe even minutes or days ago. So let's take a look. What we have initially, which you have to understand about this immunological memory characteristic, is that you will first exhibit a primary immune response. This is something we're all quite familiar with because this is usually the first response to a foreign antigen that we haven't seen before, and it's something that really makes us sick. We really feel the effects of this because this is, again, a reaction in an immunological reaction to the first exposure of whatever antigen that we're referring to, to first exposure. That's why it's called primary. First exposure to a foreign antigen that was never seen before. And it's characteristic of the immune system to have a primary immune response. We know that it's primary because we can tell that the peak activity the greatest amount of battling that's going to occur within the body between immune cells and pathogens and antigens will occur in primary immune response about 10 to 17 days after you have an initial exposure to that pathogen. After exposure. That's a long time. And that's usually why we feel so sick for, you know, at least a week, you know, for a lot of the time when we have sickness and then it starts to subside uh, after that. That's because we're in this effect of this uh, pathogen and antigen that's initially we're being exposed to takes a lot of time for our body to attack and develop uh, or attack and try to defeat. And that time is about 10 to 17 days. During this time, once you have peak activity, at that 10 to 17 day mark, this is when you have, we consider peak activity the following. Because you might be wondering, well, what does it mean in immunology when you say peak activity? This is when selected 
B cell and T cell populations, the ones that were clonally selected, the ones that are specifically going to fight against the specific antigen or pathogen that's infecting us, that's when you have selected B cell and T cell populations become effectors. That's a long time to have something that is doing the dirty work, the actual killing of pathogen, to take effect. That's why the primary immune response is so critical. We need an initial exposure because now when you have another exposure to the same thing, you're going to exhibit something very powerful known as the secondary immune response. It's very, very appropriately named. Let's take a look at what happens the second time or the third time or the fourth time you're exposed to the same antigen. Key word here is the same antigen. So let's write this down. This is the immunological reaction that your body has to the same antigen that I was, hypothetical antigen that was referred to in this primary response. So it's the same antigen, but the difference is the same antigen again. And why I say again is this could mean the second time, the third time, the fourth time, whatever time it may be, you will always exhibit something known as a secondary immune response. This will be a much faster, a much stronger, a much more collective and more prolonged response. Your body is ready and primed to defeat the same antigen the second, third, fourth time, whatever it may be. So much so you may not even notice that you're sick with that pathogen. It only takes two to seven days to reach the peak activity after initial exposure. To the, to the same antigen. Look at the difference here. 2 to 7 versus 10 to 17 days. So quick you may not even notice the fact that you have another infection, the same infection that it's. So even more so than the time that it takes, the secondary immune response even requires less antigen because you need a certain amount of antigen for a primary immune response. In the secondary immune response, you need even less antigen to stimulate the secondary response. Less antigen is going to be needed to stimulate an, a, a full-blown immune response. So it's much less to stimulate the secondary response as compared to the primary response. And finally, why is it that you have this much better reaction, immunological reaction to the same antigen, the second, third, fourth, fifth time, whatever it may be? That's of course due to part of the third major characteristic, the effector cells or the clonally selected memory cells actually. This is all due to memory B cells and T cells that are always floating around. They're always going to be there ready to immediately take effect. These memory B cells and T cells have the capability of giving rise to effector cells much faster, two to seven days. Remember these, these effector cells that took 10 to 17 days? If you have memory and B cells and T cells, they only take two to seven days to allow for complete effect of B cells and T cells to take place. Big idea you should just remember about this thing, chicken pox. You got chicken pox once, you never got it again. Why is that? Well, chickenpox didn't disappear. People still get it, but you have these a great collection of memory B cells and T cells that are so good at remembering chickenpox was once there within the body that they defeat it so quickly and so efficiently the next time that you're exposed to it. Overall, this covers our look at the adaptive immunity characteristics. Again, this is what separates adaptive immunity from innate immunity. These four major characteristics, be sure to recognize and understand all of them.